Release was sent me. Besides the henny, his eyes that seen plenty. Things get skinny as if Queens was a Craig Jenny. Instead of diet plans, it's cracked 200 grand. I pump a G pack, peeping for where the D's at. It's slow. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the E36 M3 Drift Car Project. Finally, I'm so excited to be back. We have so much exciting stuff to talk about. So without wasting any time, let's go ahead and get right into it. So the very first thing is this lightweight wing that I've installed on the car. This is actually a wing from Violent M3 on Instagram. And I have some thoughts about it that I'm gonna share in a future episode. But really in this episode, I just wanted to show that it's installed. I'll also talk through some of the specifics and how I installed it. As you can see right now, <clears throat> I've got weights sitting up here to kind of make the uh, bottom sit flat while the double-sided tape completely cures. But like I said, we will talk more about that in a future episode. Another exciting thing that you may have seen on my Instagram is that I spent about a month completely masking the entire car and fixing any and all of the rust that I could find. And we did a nice undercoating on the entire bottom of the car. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to see it, so we'll try and find some pictures to include here. But I also pulled both of the side skirts off and we actually sanded and fixed a ton of rust as well as this entire fender, which I don't really remember. I think I showed it in the very first YouTube video I did on this car, but this fender had so much rust along the inside that I cleared up the best that I could. And I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to really see, but yeah, maybe a little bit. There's a nice coat of black undercoating paint on there now. So that's pretty well and good dialed in. The other thing, let me see if I can show you guys here. So there was a rough spot in this door and it was right there. And I think I showed it on camera a couple times in a couple episodes, but that was one of the things that got repaired, which is really nice because it's really nice to be able to open the door and you know, not immediately see a giant spot of rust. It's like you're welcome to your M3 and you just got rust, that kind of sucked. So <laughs> nice to have that gone. And of course, we went all the way to the back back here. You can see I did a really nice line. Actually, I don't really know how well you're gonna be able to see that, but take my word for it. There's a really nice, there you go. Just pointed at the wrong thing. There's a really nice line where the paint ends. I did all four jack points as well. So yeah, you know, it's not a perfect solution to do it like this. Obviously new metal in a lot of spots would have probably been more ideal, but like, this is the what I had time and money to be able to afford to do. So this is what we've got just to try to extend the lifespan of the vehicle. The other thing which like I said, I'll talk more about this whenever I go to take this wing off to show you guys um, how I mounted it and all that because I'm really, really proud of that. Um, but there was a section of rust along the bottom of the trunk, the actual trunk lid I should say, and I sanded and repaired all of that. So. Let's talk about the actual purpose of this video and why you're here though. Man, <laughs> this is pretty freaking exciting. So, these are Enki RPO1s. And if you don't know, these are the wheels that I went to Florida in one of my earlier videos to pick up. And if you saw them before, you'd be like, holy crap, they have seen the most insane transformation. And I have these brand new, the, the reproduction, but brand new center caps. I have the Enki decals. I went with some black RPF1 valves because they obviously don't make valves or RPO1s anymore. And these are 17 by 8, 38 in the front. And then these are the 17 by 9, 38 rears. So as you can see here, I've got Accelera 651 tires on these things. This is a 235 40 17 on the 17 by 9. And then this is a 215 4017 on the 17 by eight. I think this is gonna fit perfect. And you probably are thinking, Griffin, you're always talking about how you don't like to run staggered setups and like, what's going on? Like, why are you running a staggered setup? Like, I know it's a drift car, but like the fronts are gonna fit like crap. That is where these come in. That is right, boys and girls. We have a SLR super angle kit for this car. I could not be more stoked on this. This is something I've always wanted and a lot of people are probably gonna look at this and they're probably gonna say like, okay, wait a second, wait a second. It's your first drift car, like why are you starting with an angle kit? All right, hear me out here, hear me out here. 
The control arms on the car were already kind of bunk, right? They needed to be replaced. 97 plus M3 control arms are not cheap, right? So I started thinking, okay, well that starts to add up if I just put new control arms on it. Then I started thinking like the tie rods, and then I started thinking about fitment stuff, and it's like, well what if, if I just am gonna get extended control arms, like it's a drift car, I'd like more angle to go along with it, but then I'm like, I don't wanna just do like, extended E36 arms and then have like stock angle or use like those crappy angle blocks or like mod the knuckles or something. So I'm like, you know what, screw this. It's eventually gonna have an angle kit anyways. We might as well just go ahead and do it. So that's my logic with this and whether you agree with it or not, that's your prerogative. If this is gonna harm me in learning, so be it. The car's gonna look sick and I'm gonna have fun no matter what. <laughs> So that's really what's most important. But with that out of the way, another big component of this is these NDI machine hubs. Now this is just the front hubs, obviously. But these NDI machine hubs that are gonna go on these freshly powder coated knuckles are dual drilled, obviously. They're factory drilled 5x120, but NDI machine takes these and they re-drill them precisely to 5x114. Now, obviously, I'm gonna need to re-drill the brake rotors which I'll show you guys when the time comes for that. They include an awesome template to do it. It's a 3D printed template and you just kind of lay it down on the brake rotor and then it shows you where to drill. But those will be um, going on these knuckles which will give me the ability to run these wheels natively, which is nice because I do not like the idea of using adapters. So, the rest of this stuff is just SLR parts but what we need to do today is we need to get this front end reassembled because I really want to see this angle kit on here and I want to see those front wheels on. The rear is going to be a bit of a nightmare because being a rusty northern car, if you know anything about getting rusted E36 axles out, that's gonna, gonna suck. But for now we're gonna focus on what we can and the goal today is to get the front end assembled and maybe, just maybe, see the front wheels on. So, with that said, I think it's time to go ahead and get started. I really gotta be honest, I don't even know, I don't even really know where to start. Um, so I'm just gonna kinda start doing things and film them as I do them. So heck yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Yo, yo, what's up, let's keep it real, son. Count this money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Hey, yo, put the grass over there in the safe, you know what I'm saying? Cause we spit in these jackets. So clearly here I underestimate how much force it actually takes to get these wheel bearings and I guess front hub assemblies to actually seat down. So I'm using a one inch and three quarter socket and at first you can see the rubber mallet clearly was not gonna be enough. So I went ahead, got up and went and grabbed my BFH. And still I was being too gingerly with it and couldn't get it to actually, you know, move. So eventually started to really whack it, but I just wanted to let you guys know it takes way more force than you would think.
thing I've done is gone ahead and taken off the bottom mount for the broadways. And that's for a variety of reasons. The first one is that I'm actually going to be removing this sway bar bracket. Um, I just don't need it anymore because I'm actually going to be running off the SLR kit. I'm going to be running a control arm mount style sway bar. So I don't see any point in keeping that on there and with how close everything's going to be, well, really will push things further away. I just don't want any chance of this contacting the wheel because I've had that happen to me before. Because um, when there's no sway bar in here, it can loosen up and rotate. and. I just want no chance of any of that. So, I'm going to take this off, obviously take the end link off, do that on both sides. Another reason why is because this is a northern car and I probably should have powder coated these lower mounts, but I didn't because I didn't want to lose the sticker, which is probably a dumb reason. Jays, if you're watching this, I know I probably could ask you for a sticker, but whatever, it is what it is. <laughs> so anyways, one thing I want to do is I want to come into these threads in here. And just because of a little bit of rust, I want to apply some anti-seize, but I only want to do it on these internal threads. I don't want anti-seize on the entire shock body because I don't want to attract dirt um, in the chance that this thing receives multiple height changes over the next you know, couple months as I'm dialing things in. So anti-seize on there, and that's the reason why. As you can see, things are coming along really good on getting this uh, passenger side hub assembly together. Um, the hub isn't all the way on, but I have it on enough to get the axle nut started. The problem is that I just don't have enough leverage with it just sitting on the ground to actually like tighten that down and continue to sink the hub down. So I'm going to wait until I get all this bolted up to the car and that should give me the leverage I need to slowly work it down with this socket. So sorry for the mess. This is driving my OCD crazy, but this is just how it gets when you start working. Anyway, so yeah, let's go ahead and continue. I'm gonna off camera and just get all this taken off. You guys don't wanna watch me do a sway bar bracket and like thing, so. All right, don't have everything completely mounted up, but as you can see, went ahead and got this uh, top bolt in just to hold everything in place. And man, I cannot believe how good this setup looks. Obviously, I still gotta tighten down that nut, but this is coming together so <laughs> nicely. Powder coated brakes, powder coated dust shields, See if I can get you a shot of the knuckle. Let's see. Yeah, powder coated knuckle. Everything is just so beautiful in this setup. I did go ahead and take that sway bar bracket off, as well as the end link. Went ahead and also did anti seize on both the collar for the Broadways, as well as this lower mount. So that little bit of rust is not a problem whatsoever. Everything threads so nicely on these things still. So this is good. This is really freaking good. All right, y'all just saw me do the other side. The hub's still over there, gotta assemble it. But I'm thinking for this side, we need to do a little YouTube magic. So, in Jimmy Oaks's famous technique, something like, whoa, that's pretty sick. I'm a big fan of doing that. <laughs> Thanks Jimmy for teaching me that one. But anyways, got the hub and the uh, knuckle assembly all on this side, everything is great. Went ahead and did the same thing and removed the lower mounts of the Broadway coilovers as well as the sway bar attachment. Cleaned everything up, everything looks freaking fantastic. I'm super, super hyped about these hubs and to get to try them out. Obviously, we still got a lot of work to do. I got a mess out here to clean up. I'm really disappointed in how I let it get out here, but when you start grinding, sometimes you just, you just get going. But anyways, I think that's gonna be it for tonight. Anyways, guys, that is it for tonight on the M3. We'll see how much I can get done tomorrow, but on weekends, I usually only have Saturday to work because Sunday I have church and then I have to prepare for school or at least to head back to school. So. We'll see how much I can get done, but I'm really happy on the progress tonight. I got, like I said, a mess to clean me up. That's driving me nuts. We're gonna look over here. It's still messy. Anyways, <laughs> we'll catch up with you guys tomorrow.
All right, guys, so unfortunately, this is the next day, and I just didn't have time today to really do much more. So obviously you saw we got the hubs on the front, or at least they are bolted in place. Everything looks really good, but I gotta go back to school. Today is Sunday, so next week we will get the SLR angle kit on the car, and we'll kind of really start to finalize this front end, and hopefully we should be able to get the fronts on the car. If we have time, we may be also able to do the rear hubs, but that also just kind of depends on how easily those axles come out because, yeah, well, we'll see. But I did want to give you guys a little start up on these things because I have a ritual that I don't show ever here where every single week I fire up both the convertible and the M3. And by the way, if you're wondering what's going on with this thing, I promise it's coming back soon, but this thing really is going to be a serious project because I, like, let's just face it, I can't just have it come back exactly the same. Like, we're gonna need to take this thing to the next level for it to feel like what it went through was worth something and had some value. But without further ado, let's go ahead and fire both of these rigs up. Went ahead and stuck the keys in the door. All right, this thing is on a tender, so let's see. Yeah, looks like the battery the battery should be good, but, you know, also, ritual. The shoes gotta come off every time we get in this bad boy. Oh! Alrighty, here. Neutral. Let's see what we got. Oh, nope. That uh, brake pad wear light is obviously because the uh, front caliper with the brake pad wear sensor, it's disconnected, so. Man, this thing runs so good. All right, so I'm gonna let this thing warm up for a minute, but in the meantime, let's go fire up the convertible. those oh man my baby oh, I miss driving both of these things but really this one we need some gasoline
so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Every time I do that, it makes me feel a little bit good. It's nice when, even if they're down, they still run, so you can have a little fun like that. But, uh, yeah, I know my neighbors weren't probably quite too stoked on that, but I do it for you guys. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. I'm so excited to be back on YouTube. I have missed you guys so much. I'm so excited for what's to come. Like I said, next week, SLR kit, and then we should be only a video or two away from this thing coming down on the ground, and then we got some exciting plans for it, so... Anyways, keep your heads up. You guys are so awesome. You can do anything you put your mind to and remember your worth and remember your value and remember that you deserve great things. All right, I love you guys. See you guys next time.